Oh no, 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 no. Oh no. The fuck right as I'm about to jump. <laughs> dude, and I heard it. And I heard it and I was never this I'm still not. Like I'm still very uncomfortable to take my shirt off and go swimming. Right. Lights, camera, action. And nothing unites people like someone dying. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's sad and it's true though. The candy corn industry is a money laundering front. What's the worst like acid trip you've ever had? Well, this is Red Band Podcast, baby. Movies, music, conspiracies, deep existential crises. It's all inside and it's all unfiltered. So let's get started. They're having to buy me new jackets or asking me about my jacket. <laughs> and I never knew it was missing until she asked me where it was. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I, I don't know. <laughs> and there's one jacket to this day that has still escaped me. Mm. It could never be found. Never I checked the lost found. and found like continuously. Yeah. And I, I don't know. It was one of my favorite hoodies. Just a nice, simple zip up plane. It was one color. Yes. And pretty sure I left it at school and someone probably took it. Yeah. Everyone who was in school with us as kids are now um, doing arm robberies. So <laughs> they yeah. got started taking your jackets in the classroom. That was the first. <laughs> it was the first hit for them. And they thought this feels really, really good. Yeah. I like how it feels to take something that's not mine, that's of mm-hmm. value. Although I wore jackets year round because I was always a hefty boy. Oh my God. Hefty boys unite. Yeah. Same. If you're a hefty person out there and you know you are, that shouldn't be an insult. <laughs> Don't be honest with yourself. Yeah. Let's be honest. You know the struggle. You know. If it's 80 degrees outside or hotter, middle of the summer, you're wearing that jacket still mm-hmm. unzipped. So mm-hmm. that way you can let yourself breathe a little bit. And I'm. we can say that because we've been there. We know it. We've been there. We've done that. Yeah. Hefty boy logic for me was I'm going to wear a hoodie, like you said, 90 degree weather, summer, but I'm going to roll the sleeves up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that that will offset and wear shorts. Yes. Because that'll offset the hoodie. And 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 that's not true. But that mm. would piss me off. And then people would be like, why are you wearing a hoodie? And then I'd be like, look, the, the, I rolled up the sleeves yeah. and I'm wearing shorts, logically speaking. And I'd be very uptight about that. Really, I was just insecure. And that's Same. fun. <laughs> Same. I, I just liked the comfort of being able to sit yeah. in a chair and not have to worry about what I look like from the side. Y- Spilling Ooh. over my own waistline. Yeah. You're that speaking was, to me. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, this is this is maybe the first time that we've related to something like this, where yeah. it's not like touching on a movie thing or like Nickelback or whatever, you know, some kind of sentimental thing. Suspects. This is like real, this is real issues. Yeah, definitely realizing as an adult that I had forms of what they call body dysmorphia yeah. and uh, potential eating disorders in the form of overeating more than yep. anything. Yep. Um, and then being an adult and, and then having like, like bouts of like, uh, how would I call it? Impulsive, you know, I'm only going to eat one apple a day and that's not healthy either. No. And then, and then in turn eating everything, so yeah, yeah, Man. that's a deal for me. Wow, you unlocked a whole lot of stuff for me just right now. <laughs> um, I th- I think I know where my a lot of my stuff stems from. Mm-hmm. There was an exact moment, um, and this is this is a well. There's two moments. <laughs> now, the more I think about it, more moments pop up. There's yeah. two moments I can think of where things were changed for me drastically. Mm. Like before that. Summertime rolls around. You take your shirt off, put your trunks on. Yeah. Not necessarily in that order, but <laughs> hopefully hopefully you got trunks on before you're getting into the pool. But yeah, and, and it wasn't an issue until yeah. this one time I was taking swimming lessons and the instructor had us all get out of the swimming pool and stand on the edge of the pool and we were going to jump in and she was going to catch us and that was the drill. That oh. was the whole thing. Oh no. I was the last one in line to go. Everyone jumped. She caught him. And I could hear one of the little fucking kids oh. under their breath, but it's still kind of loud. Yeah. And I'm like, is she going to be able to catch him? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. The fuck? Right as I'm about to jump, <laughs> dude, and I heard it. 
and I heard it and I was never this. I'm still not like, I'm still very uncomfortable to take my shirt off and go swimming. Right. It takes and a lot look of coaxing. fucking good right now. For Thank the, you. For the viewer. I've known you since high school. Yes. We both been thick. Yeah. We, yeah. 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 You look really good right thank now. you sir yeah thank I'm you i'm not gonna lie i was checking you out a little bit <laughs> i was like god damn esteban like shit boy why don't you get you on a damn wow. we need to get you in the damn uh in the damn gqs something like that yeah T- uh sexiest man alive who does that people's magazine people something, something. but see what people don't understand is losing weight and looking good doesn't take care of the problem no because i could probably still be i could probably look like zach efron or something chris hemsworth and still be like, ah, I don't know about taking my shirt off. Mm-hmm. 100%. Because you still have whatever happened at that pool. It still lingers. It lingers. And then, uh, then of course, I did go through the phase where it's an unfortunate phase. I, wo- I was wearing T-shirts in the pool. Yeah. Yeah. Which... I don't know the logic behind because Mm -hmm. when you get out, the thing's (laughs) clinging to you anyway and like highlighting all of your insecurities. One would say it's worse than just taking your shirt off. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But for that moment when you're in the pool and your shirt's floating around you Mm -hmm. like a dress. Yeah. Like a big, like a safety bubble. Eloquent. eloquent. It feels great. And you feel a little bit safe. Second time. Second moment that came to my mind. Conveniently also at a swimming pool. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll cut this short story short because that's actually a whole separate saga I could talk about. I, I love it. I had a girlfriend, right? Sure, girlfriend yes. in middle school. Yeah. Middle school relationships. Yeah, you guys, you know, you looked at each other crossing the hall once. Yeah, girlfriend. Yeah, I mean, pretty yeah. much. There were a few <laughs> other steps in between, but that was essentially how it started. Yeah, a Maybe Yahoo I'll, Messenger uh, message uh, of a uh, of RAR and a heart. Yeah. We were all emo. Back oh then. man. I wasn't even on that. I wasn't even on, you that, on yeah. that tip. Um, maybe I'll tell that full story some other time. Cause it was a saga, but long story short, <laughs> we, we somehow like the, the week we started dating, we were also simultaneously both going, our families were both going to Las Vegas for spring break. Oh, that's fun. So it's like, Whoa. Yeah. We're boyfriend and girlfriend and we're going to be in Las Vegas. What? And I had a track phone, right? So I couldn't be like every minute of every day, like, where you at? Let's yeah. meet up. But we happened to be at uh, the stratosphere, mm. the swimming pool at the stratosphere. And me and my cousin were just, again, I had my shirt off. I felt comfortable because I was with my cousin. Yeah. So it felt like family. It's safe. And we're just playing around. I think there was a, a basketball and we were shooting hoops in the water. It was very fun. That sounds great. Yeah. Super great. And then I get out and we're toweling off and I'm standing there with my whole family, like Mm -hmm. parents, aunts, uncles, cousins, brothers, everything. And this girl swims up to me and she's like, hey, do you know the name of the girl I was dating at the time? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. And she said, um, she doesn't want to go out with you anymore. And then swims away. And my whole family like looks at me and they're like, did you know who that was? And I'm like crying on the inside and I'm like, no (laughs) one I don't even know who that was. It was so weird. <laughs> she must have had me confused with somebody else. It's weird. Oh. And then that contributed to my yeah, my chubby insecurities. You're telling me at you took a trip to Las Vegas. Yeah. Your girlfriend happened to be also in Las Vegas, Nevada, not yeah. Las Vegas, New Mexico. No. And she broke up with you. Across state lines. Through the means of somebody else. Through the means of a complete stranger. To me, she was a complete stranger, but I guess to her, it it was a weird situation. I still don't understand. Like her half sister, kind of just a friend who she calls her sister who live with her sometimes. I don't know. Yeah. Either way, when this girl swims up to me, I don't really know who she is. Right. Right. For all you know, she could have been a local. Yeah. You should have told her what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, baby. I know you still <laughs> want me. No, I'm just kidding. Smooth. See, that's way too smooth for <laughs> that's me. That's way. No, yeah, right. <laughs> Us in middle school, there's no goddamn way. No way. No way. What's Not crazy about that is it didn't sound like you were broken up with because you had your shirt off at the pool, but you had your shirt off at the pool and you immediately associated it with that. Is that what happened? That's what happened because for me, I was like, what other logic could I draw from this? Right. Right? Like she said, yes. Yeah. We're dating this whole time. And the one time she sees me in Vegas, Mm. I happen to be sopping wet with my shirt off. 
Yeah. And that was enough for her to go, mm, probably not seen enough. And that's what sucks. Like, you know, and when you're in middle school, uh, that movie eighth grade really captures what it's like to be in eighth grade. Um, but the kind of thing, like, what do, what do you expect when you're in eighth grade? Right. Yeah. And you don't realize that it's that thing where it's like, you know, when I was in eighth grade, someone would be like, you have a small dick. And it's like, yeah, we all do. We're in eighth grade. <laughs> like none of us have a ginormous dick. Yeah. Are you joking? And so it's funny how we will do that. You mm-hmm. know, we'll be like, yeah, I'm supposed to look like Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. No, you're not. You're in eighth grade, but it feels that way. And it feels real. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm supposed to be 10 years old with a, with a 10 inch, <laughs> 10 and 10. You're supposed to be 10 years old with a 10 inch hog yeah. and a 10 pack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tens all across the Tens board. That's how it's board. supposed to be when you're that young. Yeah. And if not, sorry, you're going to have scar tissue in your brain mm. for the rest of your life where now you're nervous to take your shirt off, even in front of close friends. Yeah. Like my friend now even, and I mean, we're talking recent, like within the last few years, he's he's got a pool at his house mm-hmm. and he would always wonder like why I didn't really want to go swimming Yes. And, um, you know, we would go swimming at night and it's like, yeah, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's turn all the lights off. That'd be super fun. Don't you guys think that'd be fun? <laughs> and and like, this we is can't how it goes. really play Marco Polo if there's lights on guys. We need to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's i uh, I'm right there. Yeah. I'm right there with you. Uh, I mean, I can't definitively bring up any specific events that, stuck with me mm-hmm. but i know i i got it on two fronts i got it on being a chubby boy mm-hmm. you know big boy thick boy all my life i've had thick thighs okay oh yeah um they don't lie love handles they don't lie uh i've been known to to have the love handles i gain i it's like i only gain weight in my thighs in my ass <laughs> and in the sides of my, on my love handle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All my life. And, uh, I know for me, what I can think about is the first time I realized I had stretch marks mm. done. Yeah. That was immediate. That was an immediate, like, fuck no shirts on for. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Right. So the first time I realized I had stretch marks and then I was plagued with body acne. Hmm. No fucking way in the world. Still to this day. Boy. Still to this day. Now, thankfully. You're running right now. You're running on a triple whammy. I got a triple whammy. Black. (laughs) (laughs) Black love handles body acne. Yeah. (laughs) That's, you know, the the three horsemen. Um, (laughs) Right. Yeah, that body acne definitely did a number on me. I feel like I maybe would have gotten more comfortable taking my shirt off over time if I didn't have fucking pimple scars on my back. Mm. Um, and, you know, the the last time I took, you know, that's for me that coincides with addiction a little bit because what did drugs do? They made me skinny. Oh, I'll tell you that. Yep. That's a good trigger. You mm-hmm. know, you're looking at yourself, you know, you, you just got out of rehab. You finally started eating again. But you're, you know, the love handles are back, baby. Yeah. And you're saying, what did I do to take care of that last time? Well, I didn't dedicate myself to hard work. No. Or a diet. No, I snorted Oxycontin. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that was my deal, baby, because it gave me no appetite. So did, did a couple reps. <laughs> did a couple reps. And in and out. And oh. I have, I will say this. Um I, it's, I'm much better now. I don't think about it as much. And it's like my biggest fears um, turned out not to be true. Yeah. Right? I thought, you know, the second any girl saw my back, uh, she was going to run away screaming. <laughs> right. And uh, that's never happened, you know, and I've had my shirt off around some women nice. in my life. So, you know, um, that's a good thing. And, and then being a big boy too, but like for me, um, it's like you said, man, it doesn't go away. I've been, I've been pretty fucking skinny and I've still felt like, um, the blob from X-Men. Yeah. Right. (laughs) That's, that's what's interesting too, is when we feel like blobs five years down the line, we look, we still feel like blobs and we look back at those pictures and we're like, dude, I, I was skinny. Like, why wasn't I out there getting it? Like I, I, I looked great. Why did I think I was this like obese 
Jub of the Hut, yeah, kind of creature. The worst part about that is when you're doing that, it's always when you're presently bigger than you were back then. And back yeah. then you thought you were bigger and you're like, no, 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 I'm actually big now. Back <laughs> yeah. then I thought I was bigger. I was actually a lot thinner than I thought. That like, sucks. <laughs> now is a whole new big yeah. that I've never <laughs> this seen is before. Other level of big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. Well, what are you doing? I mean, I, I need to, is it diet? Is it, you drink fucking celery every time I'm here. <laughs> that has to be part of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm doing something pretty extreme right now. Definitely the most extreme thing I've, I've ever done. Before that, it was paleo. I don't know if you're familiar with paleo. I'm not. Um, it's it's basically this idea that the, the pure, you know, the food pyramid, mm-hmm. that it's actually upside down, that it needs to be the other way that we need a lot more meats and fats yeah um it's kind of the same basis that keto runs off of where it's like you cut out the carbs the sugar um and and that kind of stuff and you flood yourself with more meats proteins peanut butters like fats like that Mm -hmm. and what happens is your body goes into ketosis and Mm -hmm. ketosis is when it switches over from using carbohydrates as energy to fat as energy. Hmm. And fat is a much more sustainable, longer lasting form of energy than carbs. Carbs, you get those spikes, those peaks, those valleys, um, those crashes. Yeah. And on that, when you're using fat, like, cause there's, there's good fat. There's, um, I think like white fat and brown fat. Okay. I think, if I remember correctly, brown fat is the better fat. I might have that. I might have it reversed. But the idea is that eventually your body starts to use the fat as energy. And as it does that, you're losing weight because hmm. your fat stores are, you know what I mean? Because it's burning. It, yeah, it's right? burning. It's right. using, it's using it, it for fuel. So it's literally burning. Yeah. And you're supposed to feel better and think clearer and have yeah. a lot more energy. And um, so paleo was along that same basis as um, keto, just with more restrictions like People oh. on keto can eat cheese, but paleo is no grain, no sugar, no dairy, oh. no legumes, which are like beans. Um, no, like <laughs> the legume. The legume. The legume family. Yeah. Random stuff too sometimes, yeah. like peas, corn, um, stuff like that. So I was doing paleo, and I mean, in three months, I dropped 40 pounds. Fuck. Yeah. God and it was damn. insane, and I felt great, and yes. I lost a lot of weight. I was fitting in clothes. And then I'm doing what I'm doing now and I look back at paleo and I'm like, damn, that was bad. Okay. That was really, cause I'm eating still a lot of bacon yeah, um, and eggs and just like a lot of fat and meat and grease. And mm-hmm. I mean, I did a lot of vegetables too, but it wasn't, it didn't focus so heavily on get your fruits and veggies. It was more like fats. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I had done that. Now this is the most extreme thing that I've ever done. And it is, um, it comes from this guy named Anthony William. Okay. And he's he's known as the medical medium. Hmm. And he has a bunch of books out. Um, I have one right there, Cleanse to Heal. Love it. And that's the one that I'm I'm going off of. And he's kind of the guy that got the celery juice movement. Not kind of. He is the guy that got the celery juice movement yeah. going. And he's helped like celebrities and, and everybody just with their health and everything like that. And so I've learned a lot through him that has like – flipped everything on its head in terms of what I thought I knew about nutrition or how things work in the body or what's good for you, what's bad for you. And so that's really what I've been doing is his, his protocols, his way of healing the types of foods to eat, the types of foods to avoid. Yeah. Um, he has three, six, what he calls a three, six, nine cleanse. Um, so that's kind of what I'm, I've been following for, I'd say about a month now. Okay. So this is relatively new. Yeah. It started like right, right before, the end of the year i started yeah. on it so that's awesome yeah i started this thing it's um you know mcdonald's has a two for six and, yeah uh, <laughs> yeah and i'm feeling and i and i'm poor right now so and, i uh, did this thing where you get the big mac and you get the 10 nuggets and you shove them up your ass yeah. no i'm just joking <laughs> um dude i i i i actually think i could adhere to a diet um I think I could be disciplined. Everybody says that. Mm -hmm. And, or maybe people don't say that. I actually think it's self doubt. Um, I kind of feel like I could get down. I like juices. I like green juices. I actually like, I typically, uh, my motto, 
the more disgusting, the better it is for you. And I have right. no problem with that, though. I <laughs> yeah. don't have a problem with that, dude. Give me a cucumber juice with a with a celery stick juice, and uh, and put a couple of cayenne peppers in there, dude. Oh, and I'll snort it. There, yeah, you know, <clears throat> you don't even need to drink it. You're gonna take it a whole different <laughs> avenue. Yeah, that's great. No, I I really, I guess the first thing that like you what you said is that the, about the food pyramid. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck were they thinking when they put that together? Um, I'll give you one word, Illuminati. <laughs> and that's really just, yeah. What, no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Triangles. Thinking, it's all there. The, uh, ooh, I mean, what's at the top of the food pyramid? I, I think it's like fruit. Probably. Let me probably look. like look sugary things. Yeah. Let's yeah. get a, yeah. Let me see. Let me uh, look up food. Because, okay, yeah. Because, I mean, based on my knowledge of the food pyramid, you, the, it's the breads, at the, the carbs are at the bottom. Oh, yeah. I, I said it earlier. I'm an idiot. It's flipped. So fats, oils, and confectionery are on the top. That's at the top. Then you have your meat, fish, and alternatives after that. Milk, cheese, and dairy. Then fruits and vegetables. And then breads, cereals, and potatoes. There. And so, and so what they're insinuating is that the, the, the levels with the largest amount of space is what is most important, which would be the grains at the bottom. Yeah. You should have the most of that. They are saying eat all your bread, cereals, and potatoes. That should be the bulk of what you eat. What the fuck? And then a little less than that, fruit and vegetables. So we're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. Then milk, cheese, and dairy then meat, fish, and then the very small one at the top, fats, oils, and confection, confectionery. confectionery. Okay. From what I learned with paleo and what I'm doing now, either way you look at it, that's so wrong. That, could, that couldn't be further from from right. It doesn't matter if you're on any diet. There's no way that that's right. There's no reason why a loaf of bread should be the biggest <laughs> part of a pyramid. <laughs> Is there any possibility that there was a conspiracy by the Italians to construct the food pyramid? <laughs> because if, pasta and bread being the most important oh, part yeah. of your meal it sounds a little Italian. It does. <laughs> and actually, if you think about it, if you think about it, the pyramid is built in the same way a bowl of spaghetti would be. Yeah. You got your uh, pasta at the bottom. Uh, that's the biggest part. It is. Then you got your fruit slash vegetable. That's the sauce. Yes. Then you got the dairy and the cheese at the top. Yes. Then you got some meat. That's the meatball. A and meat then what ball. do you have for dessert? Some ice cream, some, some gelato. Cream. I don't know. Yeah. And also, you know, you they would even potentially put some olive oil on top of all of that. That's right. Oh, of course. I forgot oils are at the top. It yeah. Might, drizzle. They might drizzle it. A little, yeah. bit of, little bit of cracked pepper. And gelato, yeah, yeah, at the end, completely. Yeah, I'm calling it, you know, let's Red Band Podcast. Go ahead, why um, not? I'm going to call that the mob <laughs> yeah. infiltrated the public school system to create the food pyramid. You heard it here first, folks. You heard it here first. The um, Italian mob. Yep. And uh, moving on from that now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I, I've basically cut out a lot of stuff, incorporated a lot of different stuff. I've had my views on certain foods changed. Yeah. And um, we'll see what comes. I mean, like I said, I'm only a month in. But, I, you know, I'm very interested to see come sun's out, gun's out time, mm -hmm. summer. And even a year from now to just see how I'm doing because again, even when I was doing paleo, I didn't stick with it for too long, but I mean, I stuck with it for what I say, three months. Yeah. That's still a significant amount of time. That's I think they good. say something like 90 days is like when you really solidify a habit and when your body's like in the groove of something, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. or no, I'm, I'm messing that up. It's the, whatever you're doing today, whatever actions you're taking today affect you 30 to 90 days. Okay. The line. That's what it was. That's what I was thinking of. I like that. Yeah, man. It's intense. I What I've noticed that's really interesting to me, because this happened when I was doing paleo too, and it's happening now. People grill you mm -hmm. almost when you're, when you're making a healthy choice. Yeah. And I don't think, I don't think it comes from a, a malicious place. It's just so weird to me. Like I made that observation. I was like, you know, 
all those years I was stuffing fried greasy foods into my mouth, Mm -hmm. drinking alcohol, not exercising, you know, just like eating copious amounts of overly salted, preserved, you know, potato chip, whatever. Like nobody bats an eye, but the second you're like, oh, I'm not eating that stuff anymore. I'm eating a lot more fruits and vegetables. It's like, why? Mm-hmm. Oh, you're crazy. I could never do that. Oh, what? Yeah. How long? That's what's. That's what I get the most. How long are you doing this for? Mm. Nobody asked me how long I was gonna fucking eat cheeseburgers for. Right. How long I was gonna continue to eat pasta? Yeah. Fried food. It's very interesting. I don't know. I. Maybe being in recovery, maybe you've noticed that with alcohol. Like you go to a party and you're not drinking. Why? 100%. You know, nobody asks like, you're, you're sticking a needle in your arm again. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have some things you wanted to do? That would be funnier if, if you like, you were like, I won't have, I'm not going to have a drink. And they're like, well, you're not drinking? And I'm like, no, it's because I'm going to put this needle in my arm. And then they're like, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, yeah, no. Like, oh dude, I got you. Yeah. You're still doing that. That's fine. Right. Um, <laughs> No, immediately when you kind of brought that up, my first thought was like recovery. It's why, yeah, there's something about making a healthy change in any way that prompts people. I wonder if it's them projecting onto Mm -hmm. you, like maybe their insecurities. And obviously, you know, like you said, people saying things like I could never, you know, and that deep rooted like insecurity about not making healthy choices or unconsciously knowing that you're killing yourself with, you know, Wendy's $4 biggie bags and <laughs> yeah. fucking monster energy drinks. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's yeah, hundred percent. Like, and I think there's, there's a couple of levels to it and especially in recovery, uh, from substance abuse. Yeah. People often say, you know, like 12 step meetings. Oh, you got to go to those forever. It's like, I think so. That's like what they're telling me. And and the people, you know, I see do some sort of recovery support group tend to be the ones that last the longest sometimes. So, you know, I'm like, I I think I need to keep going to these. Yeah. You know, (laughs) absolutely. Well, uh, uh, Tony Robbins says repetition is the mother of skill. Right. Uh, And it's like any sort of muscle or, you know, anything like that, like, you're not going to do leg day one time mm-hmm. and then be like, yeah, I've got strong legs forever. Yes. You, you keep up with it. And so I don't know. I just, it's the same thing with meditation. I remember when I was really big on it mm-hmm. and I was doing it religiously every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. Um, I had a friend ask me one time like to go hang out or whatever to go eat. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to meditate, but I'll catch up with you guys after. Yeah. And their reaction was meditate. What the fuck do you have to meditate about? Like almost angry, Mm. like literally those words meditate. What the fuck do you have to meditate about? Yeah. And I was just like, first of all, that fucking answer was so aggressive. Like (laughs) you sound like you could use some meditation. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And secondly, what's the difference? Like my whole thing was like, I don't need something to meditate on. Like, I do it like a muscle yes. because when the hard times do come, it's a lot easier to get through it and it, and it taps into it like just like that mm. versus having to start from the ground up and reteach yourself certain methods or techniques. And it's like I can – things can be great and I can still meditate. I right. can meditate and be grateful and express gratitude and just be happy with how things are and what I have currently. Yeah, That's meditation. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean – it's just so weird. No, and it's I've, funny. It's like, imagine if you were like, Hey guys, I'm not going to come eat with you. I'm going to play four hours of call of duty. They'd probably be like, Oh yeah, yeah. Play some four hours of call of duty. Yeah. Right. No, but at the moment you, you're like, Hey, I'd like to uh, check in with my spirit and possibly <laughs> elevate myself to a higher being. Uh, they're like, the fuck did you just say to me? Right. <laughs> Boy? No, I'm just kidding. But like, seriously. And, and, and you know, it's weird how it's not weird. It makes complete sense. But yeah, to 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 most people, um, that's a confusing statement. Mm-hmm. That's like something that makes them step back and go, like, "What the fuck?" I I think that's where my my biggest hangup sometimes, and this is a dumb hangup, but I hate sometimes that I hate that kind of co- of confrontation. Yeah, with someone where I'm like setting like a personal not even a boundary, but kind of like a boundary, you know, where I'm like, um, you know, 
I, I got to do this healthy thing. Yeah. Um, right now, no questions asked. And they're just like, what do you mean you got to, you know, I, I hate, it's the same reason that I hate, um, when you get a haircut and people start pointing out, you got a haircut <laughs> and that, <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of thing that like in, in, in elementary school made me just like want to give up on life. Oh, There's just such man. an anxiety about it. It's like you get a haircut and now everyone's going to comment on the fact that you got a haircut. And so it's like almost like a similar deal with that kind of a thing, you know, meditating i found myself meditating in my room and my dad comes out of the room and i think he's gonna walk into my room and i'm i would rather immediately make it look like i wasn't meditating for some reason it's a weird thing i'm like oh yeah. oh shit uh turn on the playstation blow out the candles and you're like <laughs> <laughs> you're I like think- what <laughs> why what's wrong with that what why why is it why do why would i feel weird if someone walked into my room and i was sitting there crisscross applesauce you yeah know, like <laughs> breathing and i would i would argue um leave the candles on put your hand in your pants make it look like you're doing something else yes anything other than meditating anything other, yeah it's like uh it's like spider-man homecoming where where ned is helping uh spider-man <laughs> yes. and the teacher walks in on him and he's like uh i was watching porn you know? yeah right right <laughs> <laughs> your dad would have been like word all right all right he's like word word what you watching <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> no you're right and it's something that like I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to avoid telling people yeah. what I'm doing simply for that reason. Yeah. Cause, cause then you got to explain to 10 different people, mm-hmm. 10 people becomes 15, 20. Um, and when you're doing like a lifestyle change eating wise, it's a lot harder because your friends, your family, they want to go out to eat and all of a sudden your, your, um, restrictions are like, yeah. You know, th- this has been something where I haven't eaten out. Like, there's really nowhere I can eat out. Yeah. Um, because yeah. of how car- hardcore I'm going. So it's been all home cooked meals. So um, it's, that's been the hardest part for me, being a, a bigger boy, mm-hmm. coming from the family and the friends that I have. Like, we love food. Everything, oh, yeah. every event, every get together, it's all about what are we having? What are mm-hmm. we eating? That's the, yeah. That's the thing. Fucking and so, I'm getting a dopamine rush just thinking about right? the like, potential oh, of God. what I could be having in a family function in, in a week or two. It just get you guys can't see, but he's rocking back I'm and forth in his seat beaming. right now. He's like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the same way. And so, like, I knew that it was going to be obviously a conversation I couldn't avoid because yeah. friends are going to be like, Hey, where are we going to eat? And I'd have to be like, well, you guys can eat whatever yeah. you want. You're I'm like, gonna... I'm going to the garden. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I feel like just in, in analyzing this myself, I feel like maybe part of it is they feel, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like they can't do it mm-hmm. because I'm not doing it. Right. Re- which yeah. I try my best to make everyone feel like, listen, the food I'm putting in my mouth isn't going into your stomach. Yeah. Eat whatever you want. You don't have to feel bad about eating in front of me. I've done this enough to where I'm disciplined, where I can look at a delicious, juicy, whatever. Yeah. And not be tempted, you know, or like, all right, let me just get a bite of that. Sure. Like I'm disciplined enough and I'm, I'm um, dedicated enough in my goals in what I want to reach. And like, so I tell them like, look, you guys choose whatever you want to eat. Mm-hmm. I will go. I'll even go with you because I feel like that's part of it is like, oh, we can't go to this place because he can't. Yeah. And I I want to make it clear I'm not one of those people where mm-hmm. I'm going to stare at you and be like, really? You're eating that? <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you know what that's doing to right. you? Like, no, like, we'll fucking go. I'll sit in a Buffalo Wild Wings with you guys while you chow down on 40 wings. Yeah. I'll either eat before or after. It's not a big deal to me exactly and so i think that might be a, a part of it is like people or or with you like you're not going to drink mm-hmm. well we feel like are you not going to do drugs you're not yeah. going to snort this cocaine yeah. like can we do it in front of you or you know or like it feels like you're not with them in a way totally i don't know and i get it because especially with eating mm-hmm. right eating's a very communal thing it's like we're all grubbing down on this thing and we're sharing this experience except for this guy over here who won't eat what we're eating. Yeah. The more socially acceptable the thing is too, especially yeah. it's like it's food. So no one ever is right. And it, and it, and maybe, yeah, like you're saying, like 
to them, they feel like you've just made what they're doing taboo somehow. Like yes. Like eating a cheeseburger. That's it, I think. You know, you've, you've switched the perspective from this is just a normal thing. This is what people do. We're, we're Americans. We eat a fucking cheeseburger. Yeah. To like, you know, yeah, like, oh, is what I'm doing wrong? Which is like, that's their reaction, right? Like, yeah. that's on that's on them to like, to, you know, because you as the person – or us as the people, if we're making a change and we're sticking to it, um, you know, we, we can't like base our shit on their reaction. Mm -hmm. Like we're just because that's how they're reacting. Like my first instinct might be to like, want to take back my decision. And it's like, no, yeah, like I got to stick to what I'm doing. I don't care if, if, it, if you feel weird by that, like that's, that's up to you. Like I can't, I can't take that on myself. Yeah. We can't, we can't necessarily be responsible for how you feel on a decision that we're making that doesn't affect you at all. Yeah. You know, your deal. And so, uh, yeah, that's just an observation I've made that I thought was really interesting is like people really question you when you do something that's good for yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's not everybody. It's not, right. It's not everything. Like if you start exercising more, I think that's the one exception. Like nobody's like, why are you exercising more? Right. And maybe they feel like, well, that's who you are. Mm -hmm. I know you as the guy who's always down to get a pizza and a beer, or yes. I know you as the guy to get buck wild at a party and black out. And mm -hmm. when you're no longer doing the, those things, they're like, why? Right. What happened to you? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, how long are you going to do this for? And I, like on, when I was doing paleo and stuff, they would try to mess with me a lot and it would, they would be like, dude, just eat this fry. Just eat this French fry. It's not <laughs> one fry is not going to kill you. Right. And like, that's the line, right? Is one, whatever is not going to kill you. Always one bad meal, one French fry, one yeah. drink. It's not going to kill you. But like that, that isn't what it's about. Mm -hmm. It's about, we are trying to almost like re-engineer the way that we view the world and do things right. Like, yeah. And being able to go forward with a new structure embedded in us, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, when I feel a certain way, if I feel down or overwhelmed, rather than reaching for those snacks like I would before, you can do something else. You can go exercise or the snacks that I'm reaching for are just different snacks. It's yeah. fruits and it's vegetables or whatever it is. Or rather than doing more drugs, I'm putting myself into like creative outlets yes and and that's what we're that's what it's about and exactly. it's like sure one french fry might not literally kill me mm -hmm. but it's just when you're soaring when you've really established a habit and you're soaring like by the time month three came around i was in it yeah and i was good like i wasn't missing the stuff that i used to and i was you know whatever but you get that taste and all of a sudden one french fry becomes another one becomes mm -hmm. i'll share a basket becomes take a day off becomes a week becomes it's been a whole year since I've eaten clean. Yeah. 100%. And, and now you're starting from square one. <clears throat> it's crazy because, um, yeah, yeah, like that really does seem to be, and it's so, it's easy with a French fry, but even that is like, to me, that is that as serious as, as a drink, as a drop of alcohol. Yeah. You know, and um, it's it's so interesting because I just feel like, discipline is kind of a lost art right now. And it's kind of what you're talking about. And it is what, what must be done. Like you have to have rules for yourself and mm -hmm. you have to have strict guidelines in your life. I don't eat this. I don't eat this. I don't do that. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm, and I'm in a place where like I've, and I, <laughs> it's hard when you've handled some big ones, but you're trying to take out some of the smaller ones or seemingly smaller ones now. Right. It's like, okay, I can kick uh heroin, um, and alcohol, but like, fuck that PlayStation's fucking me up, man. Yeah. And like, how can I read, how can I be strict about reading a book before I turn on the PlayStation, mm -hmm. you know? And that's a big motherfucker right there. Or like, how can I skip dessert? You know, like that's a motherfucker, you know, how can I put down these, va this vape or whatever? Yeah. And so that's kind of where I'm at with this, but like, you know, it, it's true. Like y you can't break your own rules. The second you break your rule, um, you've, you've compromised your integrity mm -hmm. that you have, like it's a relationship with yourself and you compromise it when you do that, when you take that French fry, yeah. you know, it's true. Like you have officially broken your rule that you made for yourself, your guidelines 
lines. Your your line in the sand, you crossed it. Yeah. And it may not seem like that big of a deal. It's a French fry, yada yada. No, like that's actually serious. And to me, it's like, and you know, we're talking spiritual. It coincides spiritually. You know, it's like this is why you know, whatever. I don't watch porn, right? Or something like that. It's like, you know, I don't do it because I learned that it's not good for me. And yeah. I can't even dance. I can't, I can't justify it in any way, shape or form. Like, it's just not something I can do. Porn, a French fry. I don't give a fuck what yeah. it is. It's all the same shit. And, and you, and you have to set that strict motherfucking rule with yourself it can't be flimsy, man. It has Mm -hmm. to be a line in the sand. And yeah, like I, and it's, I have learned that with drugs and alcohol, you know, and it, in, in that line, it gets tempting, you know, you're like, whoa, weed, (laughs) yeah, you know, Oh, it's just a little bit of, listen, do you want to hear one of my craziest like lines in the sand that some people would probably roll their eyes at? Absolutely. I would dare not even touch CBD. Oh, wow. I would dare not even touch CBD. I have to make that line with myself in the sand because the second I get on a CBD something that I've I've compromised my rule and it's what's stopping me from saying, well, I might as well just smoke a fucking blunt at this point. You know, I might as well hit the bong, dude. And I know that sounds crazy to maybe some people listening to this. Same with the French fry. Mm -hmm. But that's that's my line in the sand. I don't even touch CBDs. See, and to me, that doesn't sound crazy because yeah. I, as soon as you said it, I already made the connection. Mm-hmm. I already went down the line a few months and it's like, you know, um, a, whether it's an addictive brain, which I think a lot more people have nowadays, it's just about what we're addicted to, Yeah, but it's all the same. It's all the same behavior. It's like jumping from, you know, if you're crossing a river, right? A, a wide river, you're not looking at it as one big leap. You're yeah. not going from a drop of CBD to a needle in your arm. Right. It's those stepping stones to get across that you skip to and you skip to and uh, mm-hmm. CBD, I might as well just, you know, a little bit of weed and full blown. The, and then, then before you know it, you're across the river. Yeah. And and it's the same thing with anyone who deals with food issues. It's like, all right, all right. I'll, I know sweet potatoes, you know, they say sweet potatoes are better for you. I'll, I'll have a, a sweet potato. Mm-hmm. All right. I'll do a sweet potato fry. Fine. <laughs> I'll have some sweet potato fries Okay, just one. That potato wedge does look good. Let me do one potato one wedge. Potato wedge. Uh, let me just finish. I mean, you're not going to finish those, right? It's only a handful more. Right. And and then it spirals. Let me get the garlic parmesan fries this time. Let me mm. get them loaded. Oh my god, yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> you know, to me, it doesn't sound crazy at all. I absolutely get it. And everyone's different, you know. You maybe someone can handle a fry, but it's a personal journey. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you struggle with, you know, <clears throat> food, alcohol. Um, fucking video games, fucking monster bang energy drinks. Like, I don't give a fuck what it is. Like, you just got to find like what works for you. I know people in, in substance abuse recovery who can use medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. You know, I know, I know people, um, in substance use recovery who don't have to do certain things that I have to do, but like, I, I shit you not. I have started at one beer and one hit of weed and ended up smoking heroin off a foil. That has happened to me. I Mm -hmm. have done that. And it's not a matter of, I'm not, it's not because I'm weak. Yeah. It's not because I have no, well, there is a discipline element to it maybe, but you know, it's not because I'm a weak person, weak minded, weak willed. That's all I ever hear. I work in a rehab. Everybody who comes in says the same thing. Just like, I'm not strong. I just need more willpower. I just need more yada, yada, yada. To a degree, yes. But yeah. like, it's 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 the powerlessness issue. And mm-hmm. it seems like you recognize that with food. You know, I am powerless over my addiction, whatever that is. And that means I am powerless over one French fry. It's right. that serious, you know? <laughs> yeah, and obviously here we're using French fries as a metaphor, but like you said earlier, it could be anything. It could yeah. be drugs. It could be porn. It could be gambling. It could yeah. be whatever. And I, I think that's the thing that people get hung up on is it's not it's not about the thing. Mm. It's about the action. Yeah. So it's not about, oh, it's just one French fry. It's about the action of going against everything I'm trying to build for myself right exactly. now. And, and I found this out. A couple years ago when you and I reconnected and we were going through our stuff and yeah. we were on our journeys and it was ups and downs and it was hard. 
and I had, I was on one of my meditation walks, Mm -hmm. right? And I had like an epiphany. I had a breakthrough, which Mm. was huge because I was like, wow. And, And it really helped me recover from something that I was dealing with for years that I didn't even, I knew what it was, but I couldn't identify the, the reason behind it. Yeah. And so I would get pretty antsy if I was by myself, like if it was Friday night, Saturday night, and I knew that there were people out in the world doing something, but I wasn't doing anything. Mm. And you've, you've probably had those moments where the stars align and it seems like every single friend in your contacts has plans already. Right. And you're like, I just want to go do something. I just want to hang out with anybody. And I would get this like weird, almost anxious kind of sick knot in my stomach if I didn't. And I would, I would go like stir crazy. Like I just don't want to be locked in the house. What? And I never knew for years I dealt with that. Mm Mm-hmm. Finally had my breakthrough a couple years ago and I realized what it was and it was very simple and maybe a lot of you already had this figured out, but it was like not, not enjoying being around myself Mm. was the first thing, right? Where I was like, okay, I obviously don't like me enough to be with just me. Yeah. And then the next point was, okay, why though? Why don't I like to be with me? I've always, I've always gone about life telling myself and thinking, I love myself. Of course I love myself. I've never thought about hurting myself, so I must love myself. Mm -hmm. And I did a lot of um, searching for that answer. And then I, it was a hard truth when I came to it, which was maybe I don't really. Right. Or maybe I don't as much as I thought I did. Mm -hmm. And then that stepping stone became, okay, why? Why not? And I'll shorten it down. And it basically, for me, came down to respect. Yeah. I had no respect for myself. Oof. And I was like, well, why not? And it was because of those very things. Like mm-hmm. how many times you start a diet or how many times you set out to stop drinking or smoking. Right. And you're doing pretty well. Maybe you're a weekend or whatever and you're feeling good about it. And then you have just one, whatever that thing is, that whatever your French fry is, you have just one. Yeah. And before you know it, you've binged a whole meal. And afterwards, what does everybody do when they've started a diet and they let themselves have a cheat meal? They sit back and they go, oh, why do I, why do, I do that? Why do I hate myself? God. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe you say it jokingly, like, God, I hate myself. I yeah. hate when I do this. Right. But like people don't often realize the power of words and that shit resonates. Mm. Your mind doesn't know the difference really. Yeah. And your physiological body doesn't know and it responds to those words. Right. So I realized through years of negative self-talk and years of lacking discipline and this is what happened to you with waking up. I'd be like, I'm going to wake up at five in the morning and I'm going to go, even if it's a walk and then I'll work up to a jog and a sprint Mm -hmm. and I'm going to turn my life around. And that alarm clock would go off and I'd snooze it, snooze it, snooze it, snooze it until fucking noon. Yeah. And now I've lost seven hours and I'm like, God, I fucking, Oh, and all that led up to just being, I don't respect myself because I, I'm not doing the things for me that I say I'm going to do Mm -hmm. and I'm not following through on them. And when I made that realization, it like opened everything for me. Yeah. And I started small, just doing very tangible, easy things that I could say, I'm going to do this and then, and then do it. Yeah. Like I'm going to get up in the morning and make my bed first thing and I would do it. And, and I built upon that. And then before I knew it, that weird feeling of like being by myself and not having anyone to hang out with, like completely went away. Mm. Like it was gone. I haven't had it in two years wow. since I made that realization. And so then it all circles back to what we're talking about here. Whatever your French fry is, it's not about one thing. One of these isn't going to hurt you. It's about the action yeah. of going against what I'm really trying to work on with myself and the discipline I'm building. That's what people don't understand. Absolutely. And it's a tough process, right? That takes a level of self-awareness that takes some time, um, you know, and to anyone who's listening to this, who doesn't feel like they have that, you know, it's just some self-searching, you know, uh, it's, it's, Compromising your morals, you know, compromising your moral compass for yourself. You know, you, you first you have to have the morals and first you have to have the moral compass and then you have to find out where it lands 
And then you have to find out where it can't go. And, you know, the moment that you have that down, um, you, you, sh- you should and you got to stick to it. And that's a beautiful thing. It's also it is the hardest thing, yeah. you know, for anyone to do. But you're you're I think you beautifully put it so well that you're your self-respect, you know, your desire to sit with yourself, your ability, excuse me, to sit with yourself um, and not search for something outside of you to feel okay inside of you kind of it sound. Yeah. It was directly linked to your self-respect and your, your continuous compromising of your morals and your values. And that's, you know, to me, that just seems like on a very individual level, um, super profound and then it and it seems to answer a lot of questions on a larger scale mm-hmm. about what even our people closest to us who may question our decision to make that healthy choice you yeah. maybe can even have compassion and be like well i i understand what you're going through if if you feel really threatened by what i'm doing good for myself right you know? <laughs> like I, I understand that i feel bad you know and um, that's the hardest part, man, is, is not compromising those morals is not breaking past that point. Um, because yeah, whatever your French fry is, it doesn't matter. You have to know what it is though. Yeah. First. And yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the number one thing. Identifying it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm right there with you, man. Like I, what, what, what us in the substance abuse recovery community, I think what I've observed with our struggles is I think a lot of us, it's such a, a major accomplishment and it's such a huge French fry mm-hmm. to get over drugs and alcohol. Yeah. And, and, and it's like, okay, like I have, you know, for a lot of us, we know what it's like to push that compromising of morals and values to the largest extremes, right. To like, you know, to hurting the people around us, to, to stealing their shit, to, Mm. to breaking their hearts, to lying and cheating and stealing. So when we overcome that extreme part of that, you know, and we, and we build our morals and values around, like, I don't do that. I don't use drugs. I don't drink. I don't hurt the people I love. Um, that feels a lot better than what was there, but there's so much more to still be done. And I think that's kind of, you know, where I've seen myself get caught up where it's like, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to steal for a cheeseburger and I'm not going (laughs) to like, I'm not going to hurt people for caffeine. Um, and I'm not, in fact, if I'm sitting inside playing video games, I'm staying out of trouble, Yeah, you know, but (laughs) at the end of the day, like, and the people in recovery I see be the most most successful and happiest um, are the people who do take it to other levels and they do look at the other areas of their life and apply their same recovery to it. But it's easy to get comfortable. It's easy to get stagnant because you're like, well, I'm not shooting dope. I'm not lying, cheating and stealing. I'm yeah. not in prison. I'm not in jail. I'm not in front of a judge. So this should be a good enough. Right. And it's like. It, I guess it can be if you want, but like a lot of us in the recovery community are, you know, smoking vapes and chugging monster energy drinks and drinking coffee and eating sweets like none other. Yeah. <laughs> Still uh, in recovery with years of recovery. Um, so, yeah, it's it's really it. it, it what do you want from this life? You know, mm-hmm. do you want to just not lie, cheat and still and do drugs and alcohol. That's fine. Um, but like, I definitely want more, but I also see my mind get comfortable. It gets so comfortable with, you know, with, and, and me and my girlfriend are talking about that right now. You know, we're like, fuck man, you know, Netflix is going to be here. Mm-hmm. Let's go do, you know, we need to go do something. We need to, we need to open a book and go on a walk, you know, and yeah. get up and and eat something good and that's hard and 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 i mean it shouldn't be hard but it is right and that's what's funny and um that that thing you you were talking about about like people feeling like they can't do lifestyle change or they can't like they can't eat a burger in front of you because you're changing your your um 
your habits. I think I, I also struggle with that in the reverse. So like I will stop myself from making lifestyle changes to not like inconvenience those around me, which is absurd. That's crazy. Yeah. It's absurd completely, but it's something that comes into my mind sometimes. And I've struggled with that in intimate relationships. And that's why I'm grateful to have a partner right now who wants to do better with me because in the past, all my relationships, um, they start like a good time and then they descend into, um, take out food and Netflix constantly like yeah. trapped in a shell you know, and, and I have this desire, what feels like this desire to like try and make those changes, but like, I don't want to, to tell my partner like, well, you know, do you want to go do this? Or I'm going to go do this if you're going to stay here. And I'd rather not deal with that conflict. So Mm -hmm. having an open dialogue and being able to say like, look like, and we can, and me and my girlfriend, we can look at each other and we can be like, this is not what we want. Like we want to get out there and fucking do something, you know, do something different. And, um, it's been great, man. But like, yeah, it's a tricky one. Just being, you know, I, you could say like, if we want to talk about it in medical terms, like I am diagnosed with a substance use disorder, Mm -hmm. right. That can branch off into a lot of different things. And that is like a, a mental health diagnosis. Like that's what some people may call addictive personality. And we all have that, uh, in one way or another, but, um, I guess like medically speaking, like I, I am someone who struggles with this in a crippling manner that completely just dilutes my sense of reality around these things. And I can do a billion mental gymnastics like anyone else. Uh, I'm not saying I'm more addicted or less addicted than anyone else, but I'm just saying that like it is something that, and I, and I know I'm an, I'm an addict in a way that, uh, that I will end up, I can end up killing myself with food for sure or something like that. I I can do that. Yeah. (laughs) No questions asked. No. And I mean, it, what you said earlier, it it is absolutely insane that mindset because I've had the same thing where Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I would just rather avoid the conflict that could come from telling someone my new lifestyle change. Yeah. Like, don't you almost feel like weirdly on the spot? Mm -hmm. Like you're telling someone and then they start asking a bunch of questions and, and you can just, you feel hot. Right. You feel like the longer you're talking about the reasons why behind why you're doing what you're doing and the thought process, it's like the longer you talk, the more you just feel like you're low, slowly lowering, like the, their view on you is slowly going down or yeah. something like the judgment gets higher and it's not always the truth, but that's just where our heads go. Yes. And it's easier for us to just completely be very vague mm-hmm. or, you know, change the topic or, you know, um, if you use humor like I do for a lot of stuff, yeah. is to joke it <laughs> yeah. off or, you know, Absolutely. I'm one of those now or, you know, mm-hmm. just, just to get the attention off of you so you don't have to keep talking about yeah. it. Do you guys do the seven whys exercise over there where you work? No, but I'd like to learn about it because maybe I'll bring it in. Yeah. Basically, the seven whys um, can be used for anything. Yeah. It can be used for business. It takes seven whys to get to your true why. Mm. So you might ask someone, why do you want to stop drinking? Mm-hmm. And they might say, well, it's, uh, you know, so, so I can be there for my kids. Mm-hmm. And then you ask them again, okay, well, why? Why do you want to be there for your kids? And then they go a little bit deeper and they might be like, well, because, you know, I want to make sure that they don't grow up the same way that I did. You know, I want them to follow in better footsteps. Yeah. Why do you want that? Mm-hmm. Uh, because I never had that growing up, you know, and, and I, I regret a lot of the decisions I made. You know, my father wasn't there for me the way I want to be there for him. And so I want to do that. So that's what three whys. Yeah. And then yeah, you ask yeah. why again. And by doing that, by the time you get to the seventh why, they typically come up with an answer that they didn't even know was there. Yep. And that's the whole point. Um, same yeah. with same with business. Why do you want to make $10,000 in a month? Mm-hmm. And you just go, go, go. Yeah. And I just want to put a disclaimer out there. You know, unlike Joe Rogan, we are doctors. Yes. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yes. Take everything we say 100% seriously. Um, There's plaques on the wall right here that certifies every bit of information we're giving you is Mm -hmm. accurate. 
and you should listen to only us. Yeah, Rogan may not be a doctor, but I definitely am. Yeah, um, no, the wise <laughs> thing actually, we do do something like that, and I it's uh, I have this great I have this friend. I'm gonna plug him. Um, his name is Mark. Um, wish I could remember your last name right now, Mark, but I can't because I always just refer to you as tall Mark because right. he's hey. the size of Hakeem Olajuwon. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, he is tall as shit though. He runs this, um, great recovery program called choice recovery path. And he has these two books. Uh, he has a lot more than that, but he has two books that he utilizes in groups settings that just kind of have little tools and stuff like that. And one of them, and I wish I could remember what it was called right now. Um, it it's similar to that. Mm. Um, I think it's exactly that, but it's probably has a different name. Um, and it is usually to get to the root of something. And it, it fucked me up because I was shooting videos for him and all his tools so he could put them online. Mm-hmm. And when we were practicing before we, you know, hit record, um, he was doing it to us, right. Just to show us how it worked. And he did it to me and he hit me with some shit that I didn't even, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and, and we do do that in recovery. Um, and you know, you said it perfectly, even if, even your example was good and you start out with, I want to do it for my kid. Right. And that can end up somewhere. Typically we, we learned it ends up usually in the same place and it has to do with like, you know, something about like, some self-loathing type thing. It's, it's yeah. because I don't love myself. Right. Mm-hmm. That's usually where, <laughs> where something, something ends yeah. up. And so, yeah, there's a lot of good tools like that. You kind of alluded to another one that he has, which is called, and then what? Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's this exercise we do with clients where we, we role play like, okay, I give you a drink and you take it. And then what? You know, and they have to say, you know, well, and then I probably take another. Okay. And then what? Well, then I probably drink so much I black out. Okay. And then what? And then I have to go home and tell everyone I drink. Okay. And then what? And then I'm going to be so uncomfortable. I'm probably going to go drink some more. Okay. And then what? You know what <laughs> right. I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. That kind of tool too. So yeah, these are great, great things you can do to yourself. You can, you can, yep. you can utilize these things. The seven wise is great because it really, it, <laughs> there's like, it's funny. There's like seven layers of bullshit mm-hmm. before I get to like the core thing. And, yeah. and, and when we do that with clients as peer support workers, cause we're not therapists, we're instructed like the second we hit that nerve to stop yeah. because that nerve is so fucking sensitive. It can, it can, you know, you're, 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 you're pretty much like deconstructing someone's own, like, cathedral of bullshit that they've built around themselves to make themselves feel safe. Yeah. And you're, and you're breaking that thing down and they don't want you to see what's inside. Mm -hmm. So the second you see what's inside, you got to be like, okay, this is where we're going to stop. And whatever just came up for you, you do need to go talk to your therapist about, (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) you know, but it's true. It's like, yeah, I love that. There's seven layers of bullshit um, before you're going to get to my, to what's really true going on inside of me. So it's like so unfortunate that the thing that just comes out of our mouth right away is only the like just scratching the surface. Barely. And I think that's it is a lot of people stop there. Right. It's like I'm doing it for this reason. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lose weight. And then you stop there and you don't go deeper. And then that's the thing you keep telling yourself. And there's just so much more below the surface that's way more helpful and is going to propel you and is going to last so much longer. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and, you know, having that, you know, doing that work with yourself and, and understanding that for yourself, it's going to help you understand uh, people a lot better because, you know, it's also much easier. You can play that game with how you react to others, you know, and if, if someone doing something makes you uptight, you know, you, you can ask yourself why seven times Mm -hmm. and, you might find out that the thing you don't like about that person is just something you don't like about yourself. Right. Oh yeah. And that kind of deal. And, but if you can do this work on yourself and dig, dig a little deeper, you're going to have compassion for people. You know, you're going to have compassion for the person who is having trouble making that change instead of looking at them. And that's, you know, that can be a macro societal thing. You know, you wonder why, people look at people with addictions and it becomes a moral issue immediately. It's, it's right or wrong, good or bad. And it's like, no, you know, 
you can have, you know, these are people who are actually just like hurting most of the time. There yeah. are some really fucking bad people out there, yeah. you know, and, and, and sure, like they, they probably should not be existing in a society and that, and they got the wrong roll of the dice, yeah. but that's, that's pretty rare. Um, and even in some extreme cases, you know, most of the time you can, you can understand that like people are just generally hurting Mm -hmm. and, and looking for something else because it, they don't want to, they don't want to see what's inside. Yeah. And you can love someone through that. And, you know, you, you know, you don't have to, you know, judge them or lash out at them. And, and, and that's just, that comes down to just a, a general, like, non-attachment i mean that's just what it comes down to right like yeah. we're just we're always so attached to the outcome whether that's with us whether that's with other people expectations mm-hmm. like all that stuff it, it goes in there right you got to trade those expectations for appreciations yes um so yeah i would recommend i mean you could do it by yourself certainly but i think having at least one person with you right. will push you a little deeper because it's easier. Like by the time you get to why number three to just be like, oh, I feel like I got it. Yeah. Nah, that's about as deep as I can go. Like if you can find someone else who's also trying to improve and you guys could be on totally different pages. You might be lifestyle, mm-hmm. dietary, drug and uh, alcohol abuse. Yeah. The other person might be business, finance, whatever. You guys can still get together and do this exercise with each other Mm -hmm. and help that person really dig deep and get to their full seven whys. And by the end of it, you guys will have compassion for each other. You guys might even see the other person cry. Sometimes the stuff I've heard can get pretty emotional. Like they'll find something where they're like, oh shit, I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. The other thing too that I'll, I'll say about all this is like, when has anybody ever said to you, you know, God, I regret those six months when I was feeling and looking my best and yeah. eating and doing well. Yeah. My God, I regret that period, dude. <laughs> look at these pictures of me. I look incredible. I yeah. hated that time. Yeah. What? No. Nobody's ever done that. Never. In in the history of time. And if they have, fucking bring them here on the podcast and we'll ask them why they hated when they were <laughs> at their peak. <laughs> peak human being. Yeah. All that just kind of ties back into when people are asking you time and time again why you're doing what you're doing or how long you'll be doing it for Mm -hmm. or you feel awkward because you have to bring up that you're living life a little bit differently than they are and a little bit differently than you once were Mm. you know it's worth it it's worth it well hey we got um nice and serious on this one I think we needed that. You yeah. know, I had, like I told you when I came in, I was kind of like, I don't even, I don't even know. I don't even know what I, what I'd want to talk about today. But, yeah. um, I actually, earlier in the day, I was kind of like, yeah, you know, we, there's been a lot of movies coming out and we've done a lot of cool things and we've talked to freaking Brian Levant and all yeah. kinds of shit. But you know, you know, it's been a while since we just got down to the nitty gritty. Yeah. And we sure did that. It's nice, man. It is to get to, to do that. And then anyone who's listening, like, that's the question I would pose to you. What is your French fry? Mm. Ask yourself, what is my French fry? And I, yeah, and I would recommend that seven layers exercise. I mean, the seven whys. And just like trying to find, you know, now it's the new year. Like this mm-hmm. is the time to, to a page has turned. Just figure out what do you want to do and who do you have to become to achieve that thing? Absolutely. And that's what that's what will bring you continued and lasting happiness and rinse and repeat all of you red bandits out there we hope you're all doing well yeah love you all for listening yes thank you for tuning in feel free to reach out to to us Mm -hmm. in our dms if you're like you know if this if this episode resonated with you on any sort of level we are here for you yes we're not therapists we're not doctors but I don't know. I feel like this kind of stuff, having these conversations with people is always very therapeutic. Yeah. As much as I, you know, as much as I'd love to entertain you and, you know, give you wacky jokes about crazy movies and pop culture. It's like at the end of the day, like nothing would bring me more joy than to be able to, to help anyone. That's, that's what actually means the most, you know, and, and I'd love to bring that to you through laughter and joy and entertainment. And yet at the same time, you know, if, if we can be of service to you in any way, that's like on a deeper level, like we are absolutely available for that. And we had some light stuff. We talked about how we were chubby boys. Wow. We were, we were some chubby boys. Yeah. <laughs> Me still, but you oh, know, yeah. it's like, I've, I have learned and that's, you know, I'm not like, 
I have learned to love myself. Body positivity is correct. Like, I don't disagree with body positivity. I just, I also do feel like I, I, I understand that like I, a healthier lifestyle is needed for me. Yeah. And so, sure. you know, to feel better. I, I feel good about how I look. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think, you know, I, I need to, to lose any weight, um, specifically for the purposes of just feeling better about myself. But at the same time, I do want to feel better, like mentally and spiritually. And that's, yeah. you know, and I look up to you in that regard and, oh, thank and you. I look forward to, to going on my own little journey that way. That'd be great. And we can document it here. Yeah. We can give people updates here and like, that's, that's another thing I love about this as an outlet to, to do that. And Absolutely. you put it out there and it becomes real. Absolutely. I love it. Yes. I'll leave you guys with the funny image of me, chubby, standing poolside in Vegas, stratosphere, dripping wet as a random girl tells me my girlfriend wants to break up with me in front of my whole family. Think about that. Think about that. See ya. See ya. Lights, camera, action. And nothing unites people like someone dying. Yeah. Honestly, it's sad and it's true though. The candy corn industry is a money laundering front. What's the worst like acid trip you've ever had? Well, this is Red Band Podcast, baby. Movies, music, conspiracies, deep existential crises. It's all inside and it's all unfiltered. So let's get started.